Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Thank you all so much for tuning into the channel. Please go to the Patreon to support it. YouTube has cut my money. They have cut my subscribers. And we got this big fancy studio, which you all have, many of you have helped pay for. We could use some more subscribers, you guys, to the Patreon. Uh, and to the YouTube, because they keep unsubscribing people. I came across a really cool article in this uh, magazine that I wanted to talk, the, the link is below, yesmagazine.org. And what it talks about is uh, Buffalo, uh, there's a section of Buffalo that is trying to fight gentrification. And how they're doing it is they, this is the title of the article, to combat gentrification, one city is changing how homes are bought and sold. And this, this is in Buffalo, it's in what's called the Fruit District. In the 1800s, a lot of settlers, I think mainly German, had orchards all over there. So now this neighborhood is called the Fruit District and has been for a long time. And the article, which is in the show notes below, goes into a lot of details of how their big developers are trying to gentrify. But this article, is very promising because it gives sort of a roadmap on what other cities could do to combat this. Developers come in, they jack up the rents. This has happened in LA. I mean, the rents in Los Angeles are completely out of control. And there are way more empty apartments than homeless people. We could put every homeless, numerous American cities have this. I read an article, a statistic that in Portland, Oregon, there's four times more empty apartments than homeless people. And you go into these cities and you see these big developments, oh, that's a nice apartment, oh, there's a shopping in there, that's cool. Well, they're jacking up the rents, which raises the rents, the, the whole market for rent. It's unbelievable. I live in rent control. If I, this exact apartment, if I were to rent it today, it's 800 more dollars a month than what I'm paying because I'm in rent control. It's preposterous. So this is what they're doing in Buffalo. In 2017, the neighbors established the city's first community land trust. That's a new phrase for many of us, and it's a phrase we should start paying more attention to. A nonprofit designed to give residents control over the land within the neighborhood boundaries and keep housing there affordable. Huh. Interesting. How did they do it? Well, the city of Buffalo is the largest landowner in the Fruit Belt. So the city owns all this land and they put a moratorium on the sale of the 200 lots it owns there until a strategic plan for the neighborhood can be developed. And in January announced it would dedicate 20 of those lots to the Fruit Belt Community Land Trust. This is what I'm talking about, what we've been talking about on this show. We need to get involved. And this is how you get involved locally. This is the kind of stuff. It's like municipal broadband. You know, Ron Placone turned me on to that. How Chattanooga, Tennessee has now the best internet in the country. For three, uh, it's, it's I think forty nine ninety five a month. You get 300 millibytes a second. That's pretty amazing. Megabytes, sorry, not a tech guy. Fast, cheap, you know what I'm saying. Um, so, but this is the kind of thing we got to get more involved and you got to form these organizations because we, we, we're going to let the government, oh, the politicians will take care of us. No, they won't. So with more than 250 of them nationwide, these are the land trusts, community land trusts are now, uh, are not new to the gentrification fight. They were first used in the U.S. to protect rural lands for black farmers in Georgia in the late 1960s. The late 60s we've been doing this. So, and this article also goes into it. Now, there's another city that's been, that's been using these and they show the example, and I'll get into that in a second, of how the community land trust can work. You might already have a community land trust in your town. If not, you could help form one. And by forming one, the whole point of the land trust is the community gets to decide if you don't have one, and this is what we're battling here in Los Angeles, big developer comes in, let's say there's an old warehouse or an old apartment complex or something, they just come in, buy it, level it, put big expensive apartments or condos, there you go. 
And the developers don't give a shit. They'll find whatever loophole they can. Like in Santa Monica, it was really hard to build in Santa Monica. There was no new buildings for like the first 10 years I lived here because Santa Monica had very strict zoning laws and very strict. Well, these developers found this loophole that if you had a certain percentage of units that were for were affordable housing, like for low income people, you could then build whatever you wanted. So they just found that loophole and they got a bunch of people on the, the city council to go on board. They probably paid them off and then this is what happened. And now it's been completely overdeveloped. Here's what they're doing in Buffalo. The Fruit Belt Community Land Trust will acquire and own land, building and rehabbing homes and selling them at an affordable rate. When a house is sold, a cap will be placed on the allowable profit so it remains affordable for the next buyer. Yeah, they're not eliminating profit. They're not, oh, socialism is ruining. They're gonna, no. Unregulated capitalism screws over the 99%. Highly regulated like this, you can make it, there's nothing wrong with making a little bit of a profit, but let's make it reasonable so people aren't priced out. Because that's what they do too. They come into neighborhoods, they start buying people, buying, some people just say, oh, fine, I'll take the money and leave. But eventually you can't afford and if you've lived, I've lived in this neighborhood my whole life. I don't want to move. Well, you can't, then here you have to pay this crazy rent. It's, it's nuts. But this gentleman, uh, Bishop, went in, um, who works with the land trust, and this is what he said. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a different way of thinking, which is, which is helpful. It's a mind shift we are trying to create, Bishop said. Our hope is we can continue to normalize the idea of a community land trust so people know that community wealth and community control is uttermost and that we are all stronger together in this fight than we are individually. That's the key. They want us divided. They want us just like, oh, I gotta get mine. They want us in that attitude. Capitalism pits people against each other. I gotta beat you for the job, right? I gotta take your job. I gotta get that promotion. I gotta buy that house, the last good apartment in the block or whatever. That's, that's what it's all about. And people start working together and thinking about the community together and what's best for the community. They're gonna come up with very reasonable solutions. And a structure, that's the thing about a land trust, you have a structure for community input. People get to vote, people get to have a say, right? Last year, uh, Bishop, she and several community advocates traveled to Boston to visit one of the nation's most successful urban community land trusts. Dudley Neighbors in the Roxbury section of Boston acquired 1,300 parcels of abandoned land in the 1980s and transformed a once blighted neighborhood without displacing residents. Nearly 30 years later, the trust oversees 225 units of affordable housing. 225 units of affordable housing, as well as a playground, a mini orchard, and community garden. See, that's the other thing. This is a big issue in Los Angeles and a lot of inner cities. In the inner city, in the, in the, in the black and Latino neighborhoods primarily, in the poor neighborhoods, no good produce, no organic food, no, none of that stuff, right? Whole Foods isn't, isn't buying and putting space in there because they can't sell their overpriced crap to, to people that are like barely getting by. It's the whole community, a community garden. And, when, and it's study after study after study after study. Right? In a neighborhood that's where people are all involved, there's less crime. It's nice, it's clean, it's safe, it's affordable. So this is a positive thing. This land trust idea that's been around for a while and has been working for three decades in Boston. So hats off to everybody in Buffalo and it's something that all of us could start on a local level. What I say, get involved. That's how you make Gotham great again. Thank you for listening.